Hello Internet and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to programmatically modify your image after it renders with Python. There are some effects that are really cool that you just can't quite get in the compositor. For example, uh, dithering. And the example I'm going to use today is Floyd Steinberg dithering. So here I have my little scene set up. Uh, there's not much compositing going on, just a bit of denoising and setting it to black and white. This isn't actually necessary, it's just for the purpose of this dithering example. So first thing you want to do, make a new text file and uh, import BPY. We're going to get the width and the height of the image as well as the scale. So render equals bpy.context.scene.render, scale equals render.resolution underscore percentage over 100 because that's the uh, percentage you see on the side there. The width is cast it to an integer, render.resolution underscore x times the scale, and the height is similar, it's uh, render.resolution underscore y. Next, we're just going to set a file name for the output image and then a file path. I'm just using the two slashes as a relative path, so it's going to appear in the same directory as this blend file. And then a separate path for the modified image. You could use the same file path as the first one, but in the interest of uh, keeping it clean, I will not overwrite the original image that we render. All right, now we can define a function called, uh, I don't know, render and modify, which is going to call a function called render. Uh, then we just have to make sure that we actually uh, call this render and modify function at the bottom of the script. So when the script is parsed, this function is the one that's actually called first. Then we can go ahead and make our render function. So we're going to use the path that we specified at the top of the file, so we'll want to save the actual output file path. You can see on the side here it's just test.png, but maybe we don't want to use that one for when we're running the script, just to keep it clean. So bpy.context.scene.render.filepath, we'll save the previous one, and then we'll restore it after we render and save our image. And then to render, it's just bpy.ops.render.render, and set write still to true, and that will actually save the image file. And that's the uh, render function done. Then if we open up the command line, we can go ahead and run the script, and we'll see that in the folder, the image appeared, and this is the same thing as clicking render, the render still image. All right, so the idea now is that we're going to load the image that we just rendered, mess around with the pixels, and then save it again. So we'll make a function called load image. And to actually load the image, it's really simple, just bpy.data.images.load, and then the file path of your image, which we already have as the file path. So when we run that, we can see that the image is loaded up here in the image viewer. If, if we keep running this, it'll keep making duplicates of that image. So we might just want to do a little try and delete it if it's already there. And if it's not, except uh, it doesn't matter, so just pass. This is not really necessary, but it just helps keep the file clean. Otherwise, you'll just, uh, if you run it 10 times, you'll end up with 10 duplicates of the loaded image. All right, so now the actual pixel uh, modifying function, my dither function here, it's going to take uh, an array, which is going to be the array of all the, the image pixel data, and we'll mess around with that array, and then we'll return an array afterwards as well. So in this case, I'll just start by returning the same array. Then we just have to call the dither function with the image data. So in order to get the image data, we are going to need to copy the pixels into array. We'll just import numpy, and we'll use numpy.array, and just copy the entire image.pixels array. And then once we have our new data, we can just set image.pixels equal to be the new data, because it's, a, it's just an array. Then all that's left is to save the image. So we'll just go and make our uh, function called save image. We'll take our image and we'll set the file path to be the modified file path. If you don't do this, it's just going to overwrite the file that you rendered already. Again, not necessary, but if you then render the file again, it'll overwrite this one. So if you want to keep it separate, you can do that. Image.save, and that's about it. So there we go. If we run this, we can see that the second image is indeed saved with the different file name. Of course, it looks the same right now because we haven't actually changed any pixels. Uh, now for the dithering algorithm, I'm not going to explain the whole thing. It's pretty simple. You can just go to the Wikipedia article for Floyd Steinberg dithering and the, the algorithm's right there. I literally just copied it. Uh, in terms of actually modifying pixels, though, one note about that, you have to be careful because even though my original image is not rendered with alpha, editing an image like this with an image object includes alpha. So the 
array is going to contain red, green, blue, and alpha. So you can ignore the alpha component of these, uh, or you can use it if you're using alpha in your image. Just be aware that it's there. So when you calculate coordinates, you have to always multiply by four because you have red, green, blue, and alpha included in there. All right, so the dithering algorithm is done. Not too hard. If we uh, run it now, we'll have the second image file saved, but this time, there we go. It's all dithered, entirely black and white, and uh, yeah, <laughs> there you have it. As simple as that. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.